Now, digital technology has now made it easier to reach more people and enable more transactions in Nigeria and across the globe. Now, the critical mass that is financially excluded are also excluded in form of welfare and capacity development. Therefore, there is need for an integrated digital economy approach that is tech-led and directly engages the bottom of the pyramid. While financial inclusion is not an end in itself, it serves as a vital means to an end, eliminating systemic poverty and improving communal welfare. Now, the new bank is our focus on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Now, oil price uh, hit $100 per barrel on Ukraine crisis. President Buhari opened CBN Lafia branch and lots more rounded up the business week in Nigeria. Take a look. President Muhammad Buhari has inaugurated the Lafia branch of the Central Bank of Nigeria in what the governor, Mr. Godwin Emefile, said was part of his team's determination to take the bank's interventions closer to the people. According to the CBN boss, the branch office would also help in the pursuit of CBN's vigorous financial inclusion campaign. Banks and other financial institutions excluding insurance contributed 2.3 trillion naira to the nation's real gross domestic product, GDP, in 2021, up by 10.5% from 2.1 trillion in 2020. Findings from the Gross Domestic Product GDP Q4 2021 report of the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, show that the contribution of banks and other financial institutions to the real GDP rose slightly by two basis points to 3.2% from 3.0% in 2020. In spite of the numerous socio-economic challenges bedeviling the country, the manufacturing sector bounced back to growth with gross domestic product GDP of 6.5 trillion naira in 2021, representing 3.35% growth from 6.29 trillion naira in 2020. The sector had recorded a contraction of 2.75% in 2020 from 6.47 trillion naira GDP in 2019. The price of crude oil Brent has hit the roof at $100 per barrel in the international market due mainly to the ongoing Ukraine crisis. The price of oil had been predicted to rise to $100 per barrel because of a sustainable increase in demand after the coronavirus pandemic lockdown, but it did not. Business News Roundup. Now, disruptions within Nigeria's tech space will be further stared as innovation in digital banking makes its way into the fintech community. The market will feature the ghost mode, which is a unique banking experience that is an industry first. Now, full digitization processes means that customers on the platform will not only be able to conduct transactions real time, but will also get much needed support online. Now, the ghost mode feature allows users to transfer funds to beneficiaries or make payment without revealing their identities. Now, joining us now is Bukola Oluta, the CEO of Stellas Digital Bank. Many thanks for joining us in Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, Bukola. Thank you for having me, Justin. Yeah, financial inclusion, fintech, that they seem to be at the leading talk in, in financial world these days. Since the COVID-19, it has actually come to stay. So just what, uh, has Nigeria actually keyed into this particular new development full time? Yeah, um, Nigeria is yet to key in, but it's growing um, significantly. Um, the fintech on its own, the industry on its own globally, what about 7.3 uh, trillion um, as at uh, 
2021 and is growing at a CAGR cumulative annual growth of 27 percent you know every every year up to 2026 it keeps on growing the fact that the industry is uh, it's one that is growing so fast means that um, it's 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 an industry that Nigeria will also experience a boom in um, very soon, and um, we've seen quite a number of research people that knows that there is an uh, that, that this industry is the next um, oil boom, which we do we did experience in Africa and in Asia. We've seen a lot of foreign um, investors that has already positioned themselves. And you can see the likes of the, the amount of fund that has been coming into the industry. As of 2020, about 1.35 billion came into the industry in Africa. That's and um, that's, that's in 2020. And um, Nigeria took about 50% of it together 50%? with Kenya. Wow. We took about 80% then followed by Africa. Then in 2021, um, the, the funding increased to over 3 billion, okay. that is over 122 percent. So we, there has been a projection that more funds will keep coming into the industry. Even this year, there has been more funds coming into the industry, um, majorly because of so many things, that, so many innovation that is coming in, so many things that people are asking for. And you know, the, the secret about business is that if you're able to give customers what they want, you would definitely, funds would generally flow into that, um, right. into that area. Okay, let me butt in now. You know, uh, we had some sort of a, a pre-chat um, yesterday. You talked about um, how uh, most of fintech products are customer-centric. You, yes. uh, you know, just how would you say the new bank is actually doing in terms of uh, uh, Nigeria uh, ecosystem and uh, the acceptability and all of that? Yeah, um, the, the, the fintech industry actually is, um, the adoption is increasing significantly. This year it has increased to over 65 percent, meaning that the you know in a population average of 65 percent of people, uh, the yeah. inhabitant there is already adopting you know the fact that yes they have to um, they have to use um, uh, any product that is you know that is any um, innovation coming from the fintech industry, and um, really why the fintech industry is growing so much rapidly is because. It's actually a customer-focused industry, unlike um, the traditional banks that focus more on assets. You know, in those days, we focus more on the branches that the customer have, the amount of funds that they have in their in their balance sheets. These days, the fintech focus more on the customer. The customer is the is the asset. You know, there are three reasons why companies or any organization innovate. Either you are innovating to suit your customer, to increase increase your revenue or to change your process. Mm. Now, FinTech has adopted the customer focus model. So what the FinTech is actually doing is that even what the customers are not saying now, the FinTech industry is able to pick it and say that, oh, these individuals, these people are going to need this in the next five years, in the next two years, in the next 10 years. Let's start doing something towards what these people are going to need. And then once people you know, are able to innovate and give it to them, you see that a lot of people are just you know using it we've seen a lot of um, a lot of technology coming up it's a lot of people want this thing but the the, the industry beyond even fintech technology develop, um, industry generally are able to uh, notice or know or research to determine what people are going to be needing in the next one year, what people are going to be needing in the next two years. And the secret of it is that you know, they know that every customer needs speed. They want speed, speed of execution. They want simplicity. They want something that is innovative. They want convenience. They want easy access. And that's what fintech is all about. And once all this is being done, you find out that um, people are generally accepting or tilting towards the product that the fintech industry are bringing out. All right, uh, because I will come and talk about some of the new innovation or the innovation that abound in the fintech, specifically in Nigeria, vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the ghost mode banking and, of course, uh, talking about and um, protecting, um, you know, interest and, of course, uh, making sure that uh, your transactions are secure. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We still have Bukala in the house. We'll take a quick break and return what's more to stay with us.
Uh, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa, and we still have um, the CEO of Stellar's uh, Digital Bank, and we are talking about financial inclusion and, of course, how Nigerians can actually enjoy better transaction confidence and, of course, uh, better security. Now, Bukala, not too long ago, um, there was this talk. You know, it was actually like a new wave in town, ghost mode uh, banking. The name alone, you know, suggests that. Uh, something is hidden, something is um, done in stealth mode or something. Can you explain to us what this ghost mode banking and how it has uh, contributed to fintech and, uh, of course, financial inclusion in Nigeria? Okay, yeah, I was talking um, the other time about innovation and how yes. fintech in, um, industry or innovators in the same fintech industry are able to make research and know what people we need in a couple of years ahead and then they innovate. So one of the things that we discovered in a company like, in a bank like ours is that we noticed that um, people generally are very um, uh, careful about their data. They're careful about where their data is going to, where their names is going to, where information about them is going to. They are careful about the fact that they don't want their data to fall into wrong hands. So, um, so what happened in this case is that if you are not um, really sure of the source you are dealing with, it's 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 a unique feature within the fintech industry that you can use to uh, somehow protect your identity. So you can as well still deal with these people and they won't have access to your data. And um, it's more or less like a security measure. You know, in the FinTech today, um, a lot of innovation is coming in. And we find out that these innovations are moving at a faster speed Faster, faster pace than the security architecture that is that is available. And we found out that if we are not also increasing our security architecture, all the innovation can come down within a tinkle of a, you know, within a second because of, of possibility of cyber crime. And so fintech industry generally are also investing a lot in security. And this prompted us to be able to, to know to do that because these are some of the things that um, people are in you know, uh, really want, you know, people really want to, you know, do transactions without really revealing their identity, especially when they don't, uh, they are not sure of the source, you understand, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you don't want people to profile you, maybe you are, you, because of your status, so you can decide to do, it's, a, it's your choice, you can decide to do this transaction uh, under the ghost mode, the ghost mode feature. And it is actually very, very secure. And it's something that, um, you know, you're not scared of uh, maybe some sort of leakage in between, by no, the way. No, no, there's no, there's no leakage in between. Um, what really happened, what people are really bothered about is, oh, you know, generally in the fintech industry, people, we come up with a lot of innovation. innovation and uh, there are people who are also waiting to use this innovation for negative things. You've seen it all around. People do great things and people are waiting. And one of the things we notice is that, oh, are there people that are going to be waiting for, you know, to use this thing for negative things? And we found out that, okay, what would happen is that we have um, whoever is using it, the transactions, you know, son, are residents with the bank, and you know, for any reasons, maybe regulatory or anybody wants to actually get to know what the transaction is about, we would be able to make it available. And if we notice that also with us, um, uh, we, we would also be able to know if the transactions also um, that the person is doing has, you know, is as is, is suspicious. So there is a, a, a technology back end that would, um, for us, be able to let us know the kind of transactions that are passing through this. And it is not, there, there's not going to be any form of leakage um, therein. Let's talk about the future and prospect of um, you know, um, fintech, uh, fintechs in Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the financial inclusion. How far would you say uh, the fintech um, products and services have reached uh, to the hinterlands um, in Nigeria? Okay. Do we still have unbanked communities? Yeah, I, um, one of the 
one of the future or reason why fintech is actually growing is because of um, financial inclusion. We have a couple of them. We've talked about customer focus, which is one of them. We have the contactless payment. We even have the regulatory. Fintech is also growing in order to be able to help the regulators. We have a technology called the Reg Tech. We have other ones like uh, Well Tech. We have other, okay, we also have for the cryptocurrency payment acceptance, even though a lot of people had, uh, you know, thought that it is meant to be used for different purposes, but FinTech is generally working in, in doing a lot behind to make it more acceptable and uh, to make it um, known to people that these things can be used for good purpose. So for financial inclusion, um, the advent of the blockchain technology is also helping um, the, the FinTechs to be able to reach the interland to be able to reach the, um, the, the, the those places that you know that uh, that, 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 that are no um, infrastructure or financial services are not happening there so you know it's it, it because of the blockchain technology we have an open source data that is that tech firms can use can plug it to their device and be able to use for do use for banking um, data. I know it's just like, if I'm going to explain it, it's just like a Google sheet. You know, if you, if you share a Google sheet with anybody, whenever anybody is making an update, it, you know, it synchronizes and the update is going in in real time. So that's how the blockchain technology works. So different fintech companies can plug into this, this open source data made decentralized or made available by the blockchain. So you know, that's why we've been able to see the increase in agency banking. So we've seen several devices, devices that are very small, portable, or even mobile devices that people can plug in into, into account. Because we don't have, because it is expensive for banks to put their branches in these places or build a certain infrastructure, FinTech has made it more possible to provide infrastructure that, are, you know, that are, doesn't cost much to put in these areas. And the people who don't have access to bank, who don't have access to financial services, are able to just you know, go to somewhere within their vicinity or within their area and do their banking transactions. We've seen that this technology has been able to help people to save, to transfer money, to do all kinds of financial transactions. And gradually, it is helping to reduce the number of people that are unbanked. You know, in 20, 2008, the number or percentage of people that are excluded from financial transactions is about 53% of the Nigerian population. Well, that's in 2010, in 2010, it reduced to about 47. In, in, in 2020, we had a target that we should reduce it down to 20%, but we were only able to reduce it to about 36%. And with the increase in the rate of fintech, you know, especially because of these mobile devices that are going into different areas now, we should be able to meet this target. By 2024, CBN is expecting that we should be able to reduce the number of people that are not, that are excluded from financial transaction to 5%. Okay. With this, with more innovation coming in, we should be able to achieve this. All right, just before we wrap this all up, Nasa, I just want to know in terms of um, uh, feedback, you know, what uh, sort of um, acceptability are you getting with the ghost mode and banking feature? Yeah, there's a lot of acceptability. We, just as I told you before, if you are able to make an innovation of what people really want, you know, you are able to you know, to extract their expectation ahead. So when you build a technology around these people's expectation, what you generally get is acceptability. And we've seen that in a lot of mobile, uh, a lot of mobile technology, a lot of um, the GSM, we've seen what Apple is doing. Even before people, before Apple release another, you know, brand of their phone, we've seen people queuing at their doorstep because they are able to determine what people need. And when it is out, Generally, people, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been expecting. Oh, so someone can actually do this for us. Okay. You know, just like you get, you are seated and you are thinking of how can I do a cross-border payment okay. without yes. going to the bank or without leaving where I am. Mm -hmm. Just on my device, I just want to make payment to any country of the world. And FinTech has been able to make this done. We've seen a lot of people that ask this question. And FinTech has been able to give answers to these people. Okay. And that is why the, the, the adoption 
population is increasing rapidly. All right. Uh, well, Master, a very big thank you for joining us today to talk about um, the you know, innovation in fintech and, of course, um, the ghost mode banking, uh, which is a, an industry first um, by you. We uh, do appreciate your time and we wish you the best uh, in all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you again for having me. All right, Bukola is the CEO of uh, Stellas Digital Bank, and he's joined us to look at um, the way forward and, of course, um, all of uh, you know, the successes and um, prospects for uh, financial inclusion in Nigeria. And just before we go, I will leave you with this. Uh, more than 13 months since the signing of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, the president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, Mansour Ahmed, says there has been significant progress made in implementation. Now, Ahmed made this known on the sidelines of the 2022 edition of the MAN Reporter of the Year Award and Presidential Media Luncheon. My name is Justin Akademi. We'll return again next time. Bye for now. Despite the fantastic surprise speed of progress in 2020, the Africa Continental Fee Trade Agreement, AFCFTA, seems to be losing the momentum it gained among African leaders at the very time its importance is recognized elsewhere. However, the president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, engineer Mansur Ahmed, believes the agreement still holds a bright future for Africa and Nigeria. Although he agrees that policies need to be made faster, Engineer Mansour identifies the need to address issues including the rule of origin and the need to set up institutions to manage the processes involved. There have been negotiations which were intended to agree the detailed terms of the various protocols. For instance, you know the agreement says across Africa, 90% of all um, custom tariffs. tariffs will be reduced over a period of time to zero. Another seven and a half percent, which are supposed to be sensitive to different countries, will also be uh, reduced, I think, over a period of time. And lastly, there is a limit, uh, a remaining two and a half percent of the tariff items that each country regards as very, very critical to their economic well-being, and those two and a half percent of tariffs will not be uh, changed. Mansu also speaks on the need to train stakeholders like the Nigeria Customs Service, the Standards Organization of Nigeria SON, and the private sector, in order to take advantage of the ASCFTA. There will be institutions that will cover, for instance, how custom do how, how the custom services work across the different countries. How do they harmonize the arrangements so that the custom rules, in terms of operating rules, are not different for, from Ghana to Nigeria? So all these institutions are in the process of being set up. Um, and I believe that a lot of progress has been made in this regard. He expressed the association's commitment to helping members improve quality and efficiency in production to engender competitiveness under the AFCFTA.